if I'm getting this, the EMT transition is the epithelial mesenchymal transition, EMT. And it's when epithelial cells start moving around and sort of are they becoming more like stem cells or like that you could be, you've said this relates to a degree of stemness. Yeah, EMT cells are, are cells that are early in the embryonic um, phase before we have a well-defined endoderm, ectoderm, and mesoderm. So those are cells that are sort of in that transition. So they are early embryonic cells and they're, they're the ones that circulate and they have, they, they don't have the integrins and adhesion molecules that help them stick together and form an organized tumor. What they do is they respond to injury. So they're going to, they come in, they get an injury signal, the vascular channels are open in an area, they go into a tissue that's injured, and then they have the capacity, now that they've found a place to hang out, they differentiate into the epithelial, epithelial malignancy here. And, and then, then it starts going through mitosis, making a clone of breast adenocarcinoma cells, for instance. And, and so they, they have receptors, EMT cells have receptors or preferences for where they want to go? Normally areas of inflammation. And, and I, I think if we study these things, there, there, there are patterns and, and they tend to, you know, go to places that are, you know, familiar to them, you know, because, but EMT cells in general lose their polarity. They don't know which end is up. They're, they're, they're sort of random cells that are floating around and, and it depends on, you know, are, are the blood vessels nearby weepy? which we know happens from inflammation. Um, we, we get the rubor, tumor, the swelling, the redness, all of these things are indicative of very open vascular channels. And so, and, and that causes the pain. And so this is an area that's attractive to, to cancer cells. And so you- Does that make sense? Oh uh, yeah, it absolutely does. And so, but you are also, you're seeing the patterns in your notes, you'd said that the endocrine positive prostate and breast cells like to go to bone, yeah. in particular the, the pedicles and the body of vertebrae due to the rich vascular supply. Yeah, yeah. And and, and then there's, you know, coming back to, to the lifestyle, like we said, you know, uh, we know that people that are, and, and, and you don't have to be heavy to get metastasis to your spine. Many people are not, but... But these are, I think we're still beginning to understand why certain of these cell types home in on, on bone and in particular areas. There are some cancers that very seldom go to the brain, but some we're surprised if they don't go to the brain. For instance, melanoma and small cell, those are neural crests from neuroectodermal embryonic lineage. And those cells go to the brain because they're their cousins are up there. They, they recognize this rich milieu of um, neural ectodermal tissue that's there and it, it feels familiar and they're, they, that's one of their favorite places. And, and because your notes are fantastic, small cell lung cancer as well. Yes, yeah, small cell lung cancer um, also derived from neural crest. So we haven't yet just talked about the, the entire digestive system because we're seeing cancer all along the digestive system and, of course, the liver. And you've said that, that, that for example, the GI EMT cells, for, you know, from the colon, the stomach and the pancreas like to grow in the liver. Correct. And that's, that's a matter of the circulation as well. They're, they're somewhat pragmatic. Um, they're going to be going into the liver circulation through um, the, the portal circulation, which drains the, the GI tract and the, the biliary tree. And, you know, it's important to realize that all of these embryonic layers are manifest in all of these organs because the gut has neural tissue as, as well as epithelial tissue and also vascular tissue, which would have come from the endoderm. So 
all all of these th things are it, it's it's phenomenal that all of these cells knew exactly where to go in order to create continuity from from north to south and to you know allow us to live and breathe and eat and think and adapt constantly to an environment that's ever changing and you know there's a program in there that allows it all to happen and you know we're allowed to recover from injury that you know would otherwise have been lethal and it's it's all a very very delicate balance between oxidation um, antioxidation degradation programmed cell death regeneration and um it, it's we are fearfully and wonderfully made as the saying goes <laughs>